Yeah, it's going. Hello, uh, my name is Ray Lee from Cluster 3. Introduction to Engineering Mechanics, uh, Cosmos program, what else? Claremont, California. This is a fuel cell, I'm doing hydrogen flux. Right, so this is my hook. We're all supposed to have a hook. So here's a hydrogen car, and here's stacks and stacks and stacks of uh, fuel cells. Uh, <laughs> Advantages are they are expensive for now. Um, they have safety, potential safety issues, and they're most importantly they're lacking infrastructure. So they're expensive for now because the platinum within the fuel cells um, is expensive material, and we're looking towards it's big money. We're looking at different catalysts that can do the same job but at a cheaper price. So people are still researching that for now. We're looking at gold. We're looking at iron and so forth. Which um, it's potentially dangerous because the hydrogen is very combustible, um, volatile. Um, hydrogen requires much less to ignite compared to gasoline, and the flames themselves are hard to see. So, like firemen have to like learn the new stuff and get adjusted. Um, biggest problem: lack of infrastructure. It needs refueling stations for tanks because if you want to go farther than like the designated mileage of the car, you need more hydrogen, and you don't want to go home. Um, second biggest problem being it's it require an alteration of industry and transport. Um, some statistics, some statistics uh, around 70% 70 70 of people live near hydrogen generating places, yet um, most have very limited access. Criticisms are overcoming technical and economic challenges. Um, it would take a long time, like something like a few decades, let's say, and it's potentially the very intention for more immediate solutions, which we could have been researching or so whatever. Um, so Joseph Ronald, the U.S. Department of Energy, this major, he says most efficient, <laughs> most expensive way to reduce greenhouse gases. Now this was like a few years um, back, but maybe he's changed his views on it now that the, the technology is like improved. But whatever. Hi, again, there's high cost of technology, like fuel cell technology is very expensive, um, and also the gas stations they might need to like at your local Arco, you might need like another hydrogen next to the gas gasoline. All right. So this is the future. Obviously, this picture says haters are going to hate. And that's because um, before, 10 years before this, um, fuel cells were just not very practical and not like worth it to use. And we still um, weren't as aware of our future generations as we are right now. OK, also, it can be used for buses, bicycles. It's been used for buses, like 12 buses around here, UC Davis. Um, bicycles, motorcycles, pork trucks, what else? There's one presentation that says something else. Whatever. Um, the end. Uh, 
expect fuel cell technology to improve, expect it to be cheaper, expect it to be more efficient, um, and it's expect hydrogen cars to just be more like practical, feasible. <laughs> Topological space that closely resembles Euclidean space. It's like a, for me, it's like three D figure. It's easy for you to grasp, and then you just yeah, you can find points like angles, um, and also help for notions. Oh, there's something interesting. Oh, I'm so slow. Um, Einstein uh, used Riemannian geometry to help him develop his theory of relativity, general theory of relativity. It's also called the tensor. Astronomy. Uh, he strongly believed in like he was really strong in geology. Um, everything he did like went back to God, like traced back to God, like when it deals in with astronomy and things like that. Um, yeah. 
his laws, first law was that the orbit of a planet is in a relationship to the sun at one half of its own time. One of the two is its own time. So there is. Um, his second one is that life does not join planet and sun to itself equal as it is during, during equal intervals of time. So can't expand on that. Um, the square of the orbital period of 